The Aeronautical Development Agency will be seeking funds close to $5 billion from the government for the development of Tejas Mark II, AMCA, that BF program, or a UCAF program and the futuristic unmanned fighter aircraft. The Indian Air Force is keen on acquiring 114 fighters under its MRFA tender worth $20 billion, for which the Air Force will have to max out its capital expenditure funds for the next eight years and little funds will be left to procure new indigenous aircraft like Tejas Mark II and AMCA, or make payments for previous purchases like 83 Tejas Mark I-A fighters, S-400 system and 56 C-295 aircraft, and also pay for the modernization of the Mirage 2000 fleet and the long-delayed Super Shukhoi upgrade program. The Indian Air Force has reportedly told the Defence Ministry, that it is ready to settle for 90 additional Rafale fighter jets, but if forced to choose any other new aircraft in the MRFA tender, then the Air Force will procure 114 units. Manufacturing 90 Rafale in India will mean a minimum 30% cost per unit rise due to stringent transfer of technology requirements in the tender, unless India agrees to settle for completely knockdown down kits supplied by Dassault Aviation, with only the assembly work taking place in India. In a very significant development, the RDO's Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment is working on a 130mm gun that could find its way into the DRDO's future ready main battle tank. The German defense company Rheinmetall has already unveiled a prototype of a 130mm smoothbore gun for its future main battle tank, and the company has said that the increase in caliber results in 50% more kinetic energy over the 120mm gun. The estimated development cost of the DRDO's future ready main battle tank is around 5,000 crore rupees, but the investment will pay itself back many times over. An order for 1,000 FMBTs would be worth around 50,000 crore rupees, that would boost indigenous tier 1 and tier 2 industries involved in the program. Many of the parts of the FMBT will be indigenous, that includes the Bharat power pack, explosive reactive armor panels, communication and data link sets, and the night sights and targeting and fire control systems will be procured either by joint production or license manufacture in India. National Aerospace Laboratories has also revealed its plans to develop a solar-powered high-altitude platform station for civilian usage. The civilian HAPS will be designed to serve an area of 100 km from an altitude of 20 km in the atmosphere, to provide wireless communications and additional bandwidth needed to support high-speed Internet. The civilian version will be much smaller than the military version, and will have an endurance of a few days, unlike the 90 days endurance of the military version. Sri Lanka's foreign minister met with the Indian foreign minister, and the Sri Lankan side has started talks for the purchase of two Dornia 228 maritime aircraft for the Sri Lankan military. The visit of Sri Lankan Foreign Minister comes just weeks after India provided a $500 million revolving credit line to Sri Lanka, and a $1 billion credit line for food and medicines, a $515 million settlement deferment, and a $400 million currency swap facility. With an aim to provide ballistic protection to Sikh soldiers of the Indian Armed Forces, Indian firm MKU Limited has designed a new combat helmet, that is lightweight anti-allergic and anti-fungal, that the Sikh soldiers can wear the helmet comfortably over their under turban cloth. The new helmet is also compatible with modular accessory connector system, that enables head-mounted sensors and modern combat equipment such as communication systems night vision goggles and cameras on helmets. <laughs>